So recently when I was looking for a really cheap CPU to put into a budget PC, which I do build here quite often on the channel, I came across the X3430, which is a four core, four threaded Xeon, similar in comparison to an i5-750. However, it was only $7 and this made a world of a difference, especially for people looking to get into gaming on a mid-range graphics card like a GTX 1060. So today I'm gonna to be comparing this CPU, the $7 X3430, versus the i7-8700K at 4.9 gigahertz. However, the difference is that we're gonna use it with a mid-range graphics card, the GTX 780, which performs very similar to the GTX 970, which also performs pretty similar to the GTX 1063 Gigabyte Edition. Though, how does it fare in games? Let's find out. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with a video on extreme price performance versus the best currently out there. And the X3430, we got this thing to 3.8 gigahertz. For this comparison though, if you are coupling it with a very inexpensive motherboard, like a budget H55 motherboard, which you can generally pick up from 30 to $50. If you do have a bit of extra money or if you do get lucky, you can get a good P55 motherboard that will overclock this thing even higher to perhaps four gigahertz. However, for what it's worth, today's comparison, we are running it at 3.8 gigahertz and we're comparing it against the 8700K. Now this thing is clocked to five gigahertz and it is an absolute beast in gaming. This is the, currently the best six core, 12 threaded CPU you can get out there. And it does come in at a whopping $400, even though it should come in a little bit cheaper, retailers are currently upping the price due to the high demand of this CPU. But with that aside here today, we're testing five different games, Dota 2, GTA 5, CSGO, Destiny 2, and PUBG, which I've done a little bit of research on the settings that people use, and I'm using popular competitive settings with a GTX 780, which can be had for very cheap. I picked up two GTX 780s in last month's part hunt for around about 120 Australian, which would be like 90 USD each. So they are very inexpensive and they do give great price performance as well. And I have overclocked this card slightly. So it is running at around 1.1 gigahertz on the core and a little bit more on the memory. Though with that aside, getting straight into the results. Dota 2, we did see quite a big difference here. It was about 33% in favor of the 8700K. And this is one of the worst results for the X3430 here today. But even so, when we look at the results, 1080p high settings, 146 average FPS is extremely good for a CPU that costs $7. The next game, moving on to GTA 5. We had 88 average FPS versus around about 107 on the 8700K itself. So the 8700K did score another victory and it was about 25% this time around. CSGO, looking at this, we did decide to up the shadow quality to the highest possible as this is what pros do prefer when they wanna spot enemies. So thank you guys for that recommendation, you told me to change up the settings a little bit. So I did look around and I found out these were the most popular settings. And what we saw with CSGO was 348 average FPS versus 268. So the 8700K was beating this by again, a little over 35% in this benchmark. However, it was interesting to note that the 0.1% lows did hit practically the same level and this is due to the graphics, I believe, with that shadow quality, because when I usually do this graphics benchmark on different quality settings, the 0.1% lows are usually quite a bit higher. So if you are gaming on CSGO, then you may wish to be careful with that shadow quality, because if it does stutter in clutch moments, then that could mean the difference between getting the win for your team and losing out. Though next up we had Destiny 2 and here was the best score for the X3430. I used quality settings that really gave me a nice experience at 1080p with the GTX 780 and it would be good for competitive gaming too. So we saw 122 FPS versus 125 average FPS. So there was only a difference of three FPS at this resolution with the GTX 780. So this was probably the best result here for the uh, X3430. And then we had last up PUBG, a very popular game, actually probably the most popular title out there at the moment. 
with the X3430 scoring an impressive 90 FPS with a 0.1% low of 58 FPS versus the 8700K which scored 92 and a 0.1% low of 61. So keep in mind there is a little bit of variance in this benchmark, it is a multiplayer benchmark so you're never going to get a true apples to apples comparison here. But I do test on the ruins and we did test on very low settings at 1080p and the results were actually very impressive for this little Xeon 4 core. So what does all this mean? Well, I'll try my best to put this into perspective for you. I believe when you're going for a mid-range graphics card, even if you want to buy a new mid-range graphics card like a GTX 1063 gigabyte card, for example, which run around $200, then you don't need to go out and buy a brand new CPU and motherboard, which can cost in excess of $200. Something that I've shown here for $7 and a cheap motherboard and inexpensive DDR3 memory could make for a perfect match with that mid-range graphics card. And the great thing about this is as well, it's not only gonna save a lot of money, you can get into overclocking and learn how to overclock because in the future, if you do wanna step it up and you've got a bit more money and you wanna get something like an 8700K and a GTX 1080 Ti, then you'll know how to overclock and you'll be able to extract even more performance out of your 1080 Ti and your 8700K. But I must say before I get on out of here, for $7, this CPU is just so damn impressive. I was kind of shocked. I mean, yes, it is only four cores, four threads, and maybe not every single game will support it or be optimal for it in the future. But honestly, for $7, it is a freaking bargain. I think it's the best price performance, beating that of even my X5670 Xeons, which are currently one of my favorite price performance used CPUs. And they're like six cores, 12 threads. They're an actual beast and they'll be getting a dedicated video of their own very soon, so stay tuned for that. And of course, if you like this video, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below what you think of this little budget CPU. And if you want to see any more tests like this, then I love reading your comments as always. And if you like the content, then be sure to subscribe and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.